The congregation, please rise as we join together singing our processional hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, as printed in the bulletin. George Morton was born July 16, 1927 in Tipton, Iowa, to William and Lotta Morton. He was baptized into the Christian faith on August 22, 1927, and became a communicant member of Trinity in 1947. George served his country honorably in the Korean War in the Army. He was a truck driver all his life, and truly loved his wife and the game of golf. George liked traveling to the Ozarks and had quite a sense of humor, as he was always joking around. He married Eunice Hine on December 7, 1947, at Trinity Lutheran Church in Loudoun. She passed away October 19, 2015. George was called to his eternal home on Saturday, July 29, 2023. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, George was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all his sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your God is your staff and comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You will not my head the Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to George and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading comes from the prophet Isaiah, the 25th chapter, beginning at the 6th verse. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He will not let your foot slip. The epistle reading comes from Paul's letter to the church in Rome, the eighth chapter. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed is interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel comes to us according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also, and you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, 
I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And this is the gospel of our Lord. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father 
and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, dear family and friends of George, brothers and sisters in Christ, it is with heavy hearts that we gather together today in God's house. George loved coming to church, and he often told me how much he missed being able to be here on Sunday mornings. Usually when we come together here, it is with great joy and with laughter. But today is different, because today death has intruded upon our celebration. Today we come in sorrow and tears to say goodbye to George, a beloved brother in Christ. And let me say this clearly. There is no shame in this sadness, and there is no sin in our tears. We are right to mourn and grieve, because George was a special person who can never be replaced in our lives. Death now separates us for a time, and that rightly makes us sad. It makes us regret the things that we may have said or not said. All the special things that George did for us, all the stories, all the memories, all the songs he whistled, all the things that we looked forward to doing with him, these things are now gone. We can look back fondly upon our memories of George, but today we face the sad fact that we won't be making any new memories with him. And that hurts badly. And it will hurt for a long time. We will continue to feel the sting of death. We will continue to grieve for George for days, weeks, even years. Because that's what death does. It hurts us. It makes us grieve and it makes us mourn. Some churches have wrongly decided that funerals shouldn't be sad at all. And that we shouldn't focus so much on death. They try to jazz things up, calling funerals a celebration of life. They don't want to talk about death, don't want to talk about sin, because those are sad things. They want to put the fun back in funeral. Make it a time to gather together and remember all the good things that the deceased person did. Relive their life and celebrate the good times. And don't get me wrong, in some ways that is a wonderful thing to do. Over the next few hours and days and weeks, we are going to share stories about the good times that we had with George. We are going to laugh at his favorite jokes. We're going to smile about the joy that he brought into our lives. We will think back on all his favorite things. We will no doubt do that today in our time of fellowship, and there is nothing at all wrong with any of that. But because of death, those times are gone. And because of sin, not all of our memories of George are good ones. So if those things are all that we have to celebrate, then we are to be pitied above all people. If memories and nostalgia of times gone by are all that we have gathered to think about today, then today is indeed the saddest of days. But it isn't. Today we celebrate far more than just the past. Here, because of George's Christian faith and the love of God, we celebrate the present and we celebrate the future and all eternity. By grace, through faith, George has now completely overcome this sinful world. There is no more pain, no more anger or resentment, no more sorrow, no more frustration as his body slowly failed him more and more. By the love of God, George has been set free from all of that and rests in the loving arms of our Heavenly Father. He is reunited with Eunice and with all those who have gone before him in the one true faith, and death no longer has any hold on him. Today, we are not just having a celebration of life. We are having a celebration of eternal life. Our focus is not on what George did, but on what Jesus did for George and what he does for every one of us. By the grace of Jesus Christ, we do not mourn as those who have no hope. Because even today, even amid our sorrow and tears, we rejoice because we know that George died in the one true faith, clinging to the promise of salvation delivered to him through the cross and empty tomb of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Just a little while ago, we read the familiar words of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This word of God brings us so much peace, so much comfort, even in the midst of our sorrow. The scene that it paints is so tranquil, so serene. A gentle shepherd leading sheep in lush pastures. It's a calming thought when everything around us is so turbulent and so upsetting. 
It's a soothing scene that gives us peace and respite from everything else that's going on. And sadly for many people, that's all that it is. A pleasant picture for us to focus on so that our sadness and sorrow don't seem quite so bad. But for those who believe in Jesus Christ, these precious words of Scripture are so much more. The comfort of these words isn't just in the idyllic picture that they paint, isn't just in their helping us find a happy place in our imagination that we can run and hide in. Today, as we stare death in the face, these words give us true comfort, real comfort, because we know that the Lord is our shepherd. And we also know that the Lord is George's shepherd. Not was, is. In this glorious truth, we have comfort and we have real peace. All throughout George's life, God was there with him, being his good shepherd, taking care of his beloved sheep. Now, sheep don't always listen. They're stubborn. They want to do things their own way. They're hard to keep penned up, kind of like George. <laughs> and yet, the good shepherd never abandons his sheep never turns his back on them, never gives up. He continues to care for them, nurture them, give them just what they need and far, far more. Our Lord Jesus Christ lovingly does this for each and every one of us just as he does for George. As the Good Shepherd, Jesus leads us in the paths of righteousness, guiding us, teaching us by his holy word. He lays out a safe path amid all the pitfalls and snares that the devil would lay before us. Now, this doesn't always mean that the path is easy or that it's always strewn with earthly riches and luxury. And it certainly doesn't mean that we will always follow the path well. For we all, like sheep, have gone astray. All of us. You, me, George, everyone. We are all sinners seeking to find our own way running from the voice of the Good Shepherd, turning aside from the path of righteousness to fall into depravity and sin. We ignore God's word. We belittle his gifts. We want him to just leave us alone. But God never does. He never has, and he never will. No matter how far we stray, no matter how long we flee from God's love, God is always there, calling us back, reaching out for us to return to the safety of his fold, showing us the path of righteousness that leads to life rather than death, sometimes carrying us, kicking and screaming back to the flock. He washes us with the still waters of baptism, taking away all of our stains and filth through the water and his word. He feeds us not just with the finest of pastures, but with his true body and blood given and shed for us. For the good shepherd doesn't just watch over us. He lays down his life for the sheep. As sinners, we don't deserve anything good from the holy hand of God. As sinners, all we deserve is nothing but eternal condemnation and hell. God has given us his holy law, and we have broken it time and time again in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. God's law is perfect and absolute, and we all fall miserably short. None of us are good enough. None of us are righteous enough. None of us can live well enough to deserve God's love. For God is holy and without sin, and we are by nature sinful and unclean. By rights, we deserve only wrath and destruction from God, all of us. By our sin, we deserve nothing but eternal death, and we can do nothing to set ourselves free from sin. But God can, and he does, and he has. Jesus came to us not just to give us rules to follow, not just to give us pleasant images to think about. Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, holy, immortal, and eternal, came to lay down his life in death in order to redeem us from sin, death, and the devil. All of our sin, every misdeed and foul offense, every ounce of our shame and guilt and filth, it was laid upon Jesus Christ, the spotless Lamb of God. He came to us, God in the flesh, to redeem us, to take away our guilt, to pay our eternal penalty in full. In love, he willingly took all that sin upon himself, even though he was without sin. 
He willingly carried that staggering weight of our guilt to the cross, and there he suffered and died in our place, giving his life as the only sacrifice sufficient to atone for all our wrongdoing. Every one of your sins, every time that you disobeyed and disregarded the word of God, it was all laid upon Jesus, and he paid the debt that you could never repay. He died for you to cleanse you by his holy blood. He took your sin, your guilt, the suffering and death that should have been yours for all eternity, and he paid the price in full so that you don't have to. For you, Jesus Christ was crucified, died, and was buried. But on the third day, he rose again from the grave, breaking the chains of death forever. Not just for himself, but for all those who look to him in faith, for all who believe in him as their Savior. He did this for us sinners, for you, for me, for George, for everyone. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus Christ defeated sin, death, and the devil to give the free gift of forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life to all those who believe. This is the glorious truth of the gospel that George heard every time that he came to this holy house, every time that he was in God's word, wherever that may have been. And this is why today, even amid our tears, we rejoice. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, for God himself is with us, and his rod and staff, they comfort us. The world may mock us, may try to tear down and belittle our faith, may tell us that we have no real hope at all. Our own sinful flesh may doubt and scoff, but the word of the Lord is sure and certain and eternal. All who believe, all who look in faith to the cross and empty tomb of Jesus Christ our Lord can boldly proclaim, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. For George and all those gathered in the arms of the Good Shepherd in heaven, their faith has become sight as they dwell in the heavenly paradise prepared for them by Jesus Christ himself. And for those of us still here in the valley of the shadow of death, even now we dwell in the house of the Lord, trusting in the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, praising him for his goodness, grace, and mercy, and looking forward with eager joy to that glorious day when we will be reunited with George and Eunice and all those who have gone before us in Christian faith. There in heaven, in that perfect eternal paradise, there will be no more sorrow, no more tears, no more anger, no more pain. There we will gather at the marriage feast of the Lamb, celebrating his holy presence forever, never again to be separated by death, set free for all eternity from all sin and sorrow and suffering and temptation in a celebration of life that will never come to an end. And until that day, when we too lie down in the sleep of death, we know that Jesus Christ himself is with us leading us, guiding us, protecting us, guarding us. He is the good shepherd, and we are the sheep of his pasture. Whatever perils we may face, no matter how we might stray, we know the glorious truth of God's word. The Lord is our shepherd, and we need not want anything more. So even today, even as we weep and feel such pain at George's death, even today we rejoice knowing that the Good Shepherd laid down his life for his sheep and rose again from the grave to give us eternal life. And because he did, we know that George and all those who believe will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And in faith, we look forward to our own heavenly home, knowing that though we are sinners and wandering sheep, the Lord is our shepherd. He has anointed our head with oil, and our cup runs over with the undeserved mercy, grace, love, and forgiveness that he has so freely poured into our lives through his sacrificial death and his glorious resurrection. For by the cross of Jesus Christ alone, by his empty tomb alone, you are forgiven of every one of your sins, and eternal life in heaven is yours. To God alone be all glory, now and forever. Amen.
Now that peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. O Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the life you granted to your servant George. We thank you for all the blessings you poured out upon each of us through him and for all the joyous memories of him that we will cherish. We thank you especially that by your word you proclaimed your precious gospel message of forgiveness to George in many ways throughout his life. Give to us the peace that comes from knowing your word and having real faith in it that we may have true comfort in times of sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Be with us in our grief, O Lord. Give to us that consolation and peace which can come only from you. Strengthen our faith, lift our hearts, and give to us absolute assurance of life everlasting, sealed for us by our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Direct our saddened eyes to your cross, that we may know true peace and joy even in our darkest days. Lord, in your mercy. Most merciful God, we rejoice that you have come to us in the flesh, that you have taken upon yourself the sins of the world, and that you have won for each of us the free gift of salvation. Lead us by your word to live lives that proclaim that forgiveness to all those around us. Help us by your Holy Spirit to live by your word throughout our lives in all of our thoughts, words, and deeds. Speak through us in what we do and what we say that others may hear your word and be brought to true faith in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord of mercy, we pray for all those who do not trust in your love and forgiveness. By your word, work faith in the hearts of those who do not believe and turn back the hearts of those who have strayed from your church. Open their eyes to see your truth, that they may not find themselves in eternal condemnation upon their death but may live in the constant assurance of your promise of salvation through Jesus Christ alone. Speak your word through us, that they too may rejoice with us in your love, both here on earth and for all eternity in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort us, O Lord, in the days and years ahead as we mourn George's death. Give us the comfort that this world cannot give as you speak to us by your word. Touch our hearts, fill us with faith, and lead us to look forward to that glorious reunion of all believers on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. All this and whatever else you know that we need, we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, 
You gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen. The congregation, please remain standing for our closing hymn, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. <laughs>